I cannot emphasize that more. Um, you know, um, if you look at uh, what happened um, uh, during the HIV AIDS time, et cetera, when really patients really advocated uh, for the disease, um, uh, for research, et cetera, um, and that has made a major impact. Um, now is the time to, you know, stand up again and for kidney kids and say, we need more funding. Um, um, there, there needs to be progress um, um, to, to be made, but we have been ignored. Uh, give us some access, give, give uh, physician researchers access to more funding um, to really push this field forward. Patients are being hurt. Uh, this is America, okay? Uh, and so we, we encourage our patients to be uh, loud and open. Um, talk to your congressmen, talk to politicians. Um, you can uh, influence how money is being distributed in this country. Um, so um, I'm all for that. It is absolutely critical. Um, I mean, the only way we can get drugs approved um, is by uh, conducting pivotal clinical trials, early phase clinical trials to look at safety, obviously. Um, I always see clinical trials um, as a window of opportunity to really get access to treatments that have not been yet uh, fully tested, that are not yet FDA approved. Um, you don't uh, forego necessarily any other treatment that you still have. Um, you are, you are, you are, you're still eligible to the standard of care treatments. Um, but you may close a window to clinical trials if you start with a Sutin or Votrin like drug. Um, so right now, uh, so again, the, the clinical trial that I mentioned, um, the epinevo combination, uh, randomizing persons, uh, uh, patients to that versus sunitinib, uh, will not allow any prior treatment. So um, if you uh, start any of these uh, targeted therapies um, outside of a clinical trial, you cannot go on this trial and you're closing um, a window of opportunity. So um, we can only push this field forward by conducting clinical trials, um, getting drugs approved um, to help um, other patients. It's an opportunity for patients themselves, but they will also help the field and they will help countless other kidney cancer patients in the future uh, to get access to some of the most exciting therapies. You know, so, so when I see a patient for the first time, I spend an hour plus um, and, and I try to, um, you know, tell them what the landscape, uh, the, the emerging landscape of treatment options for uh, kidney cancer uh, therapies looks like. Um, and then I tell them, you know, these are, these are the standard of care th uh, um, therapies, um, but then there are also clinical trials. And how could you potentially strategize to maximize exposure to these different drugs, including access to therapies that might indeed lead to uh, durable responses and uh, maybe prolonged survival. Um, so, um, so it is important to be strategic. I understand when patients are initially diagnosed with kidney cancer or recurrent metastatic kidney cancer, they're scared. Um, they want to start treatment yesterday. Um, but I do believe, you know, going to an experienced academic center, an experienced um, kidney cancer expert, it can be really uh, helpful um, uh, to uh, devise an individualized strategy um, for your medical condition, for your um, uh, um, organ function, etc. What is the most useful approach for your treatment history that, that might begin? Um, so, so don't miss opportunities just because you are scared. Get informed. Often you have time uh, to talk to um, other physicians. Um, get second opinions. Um, even patients come to me and tell them, you know, I don't have a problem. You're looking at other places. Um, get informed um, and then uh, decide what you want to do um, and we will respect it no matter what.